All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Hey everyone, I'm Tom June. Now, as we sit here a week removed from that first launch attempt of an orbital class vehicle by Virgin Orbit at Spaceport Cornwall on the 9th of January 2023, the big question that's been floating around is, does that signal the end for the UK's ambitions in space? Stick around until the end because I am going to draw a conclusion on this. Now, for those of you that maybe aren't aware, let's go back a week to Monday the 9th of January 2023. And just after 10pm, Virgin Orbit's Cosmic Girl, a converted Boeing 747, successfully took off from Spaceport Cornwall, which is located in the southwest of England at Newquay Airport. It travelled west out over the Atlantic until it reached the southern tip of Ireland and from there it deployed successfully the Launcher 1 two-stage rocket. Its first stage engine powered up and it carried the rocket to space. We then had a good uh, first stage separation and the second stage Newton 4 engine ignited and it was supposed to propel the rocket most of the way into orbit. From there it was uh, due to carry out a bit of a coast manoeuvre and then the second stage would reignite to uh, put the, the payloads into their 550 kilometre orbital inclination. However, after the first stage engine shut down what we were seeing uh, on the live stream didn't indicate that uh, the rocket was performing as expected. And indeed, um, Virgin Orbit came out uh, about half an hour to 45 minutes after the initial shutdown of the second stage engine and said that they'd experienced an anomaly. Um, later on, they also confirmed that the rest of the launch vehicle and the payloads had been lost and it hadn't made it to orbit at all. So what went wrong? Well, in the weeks since the mission, there's been scant information, but what Virgin Orbit are saying seems to confirm our initial uh, thoughts at the time, that the second stage failed to reignite after multiple times of asking. They also seem to indicate that that second stage Newton 4 engine shut down prematurely. On watching the live feed and the generally scrambled telemetry data that Virgin Orbit were showing us, the rocket achieved an altitude of about 184,000 meters. Now, that's not entirely confirmed because like I said, there were issues with the telemetry and it was showing us various altitudes and speeds, including the fact that Virgin Orbit appeared to reach faster than light speed, which has become a bit of a meme in this past week. Um, so we take everything there with a pinch of salt uh, and realistically, from what we were seeing at the time as I live streamed the, the launch event, we were seeing altitudes as much as about 280,000 meters or 280 kilometers. Either way, it seems that that Newton 4 did not perform as expected and pretty much confirms in line with what we were saying all the way back in December that there were issues with that engine. That was confirmed when other engines at their factory in California were being tested. Engineers were on the ground at Spaceport Cornwall, which delayed the launch into January of this year. But for whatever reason, that engine has experienced a failure and it resulted in a total loss of the mission, including the nine satellites that made up the payload for it. So if you've been paying attention to anything uh, from the media, from BBC News to The Guardian to other news sources around the world, it's been pretty doom and gloom and everybody seems to be signalling the death knell of the UK space industry before it's really got going. But is that the case? I'll be perfectly honest with you, no. Because if you follow along with my main UK space news channel or any of the other space flight channels, you'll know that there's some pretty exciting things coming up. And yet we do have setbacks. And in the UK, we have this tendency to be really pessimistic. Our heads go down and we think oh, this is the end without really ever taking a second to step back, analyze the problem and think, well, hey, it's not that bad. And in this case, it's not actually that bad. It's bad for the clients of Virgin Orbit, and it's ultimately bad for Virgin Orbit, whose stock has dropped quite considerably as a result of that failure. But before that, they had four successful launches, so they are perfectly capable of carrying out these operations, and further analysis should reveal exactly what went wrong. But for us here in the UK, we have other things ongoing, 
As I said, take a look at my main UK Space News channel and you'll see that there is a second spaceport being built right now up in Shetland at Saxevoort. And progress is continuing beautifully up there. We will see a rocket launch from Saxevoort in 2023. Um, furthermore, we have to remember that uh, this is a, a multi-stage system that Virgin Orbit use. And Cosmic Girl did its job brilliantly. It took the Launcher 1 rocket to the launch area, successfully deployed it, and then returned back to Spaceport Cornwall later on in that evening. Um, so, you know, that, that part of the thing was a complete success. And ultimately, we did launch a rocket into space from the UK. Now, I know that's been done before, but those rockets were military class rockets. They go straight up and they come straight back down. This was the first that was designed to be put into orbit, carrying payloads, carrying satellites. So yeah, the second half of the mission may not have succeeded. Uh, and indeed, you can consider that a failure by Virgin Orbit. You know, there were some pretty exciting satellite missions, uh, including Spaceforge from Wales, which I was most excited about. And yeah, it's, um, it is devastating for those companies that have spent years developing that technology, only to see it, you know, come back to Earth in a fiery ball of flames. But like I said, it's not entirely all doom and gloom. We did still launch a rocket from the UK, and it's a really good first step to trying it again. Um, you know, whether that's going to be Virgin Orbit or that's going to be another launch provider, we just have to wait and see. But I know the team at Spaceport Cornwall did not spend years and years working hard, working with the UK government, the UK Space Agency, the Civil Aviation Authority to set up this wonderful facility down there just to see it now go to waste because we had an unsuccessful first launch. What would have happened to SpaceX if they had just given up? You know, we wouldn't see the Falcon 9 that's, you know, completed over 200 successful launches now and is just such an amazing system to watch. Or some of the other companies from, you know, around the world, such as Rocket Lab or, you know, Ariane. Um, the list goes on and on. We can't be too downtrodden with this and it does not signal the end. What we do need to do is quite simply keep calm and carry on. Focus, double down on our efforts and provide additional funding and support to all these other, you know, uh, spaceflight companies in the UK. We have Orbex, we have Skyrora, we have Reaction Engines and Rolls Royce with their single stage to orbit space plane plans. We are also seeing other companies looking to take their technology to the UK and use it. Uh, there's a company called Space Engineering Systems, who I believe are based in Canada. They have uh, an unmanned SSTO that uses a turbo ramjet, similar to what Rolls-Royce and Reaction Engines are having planned, and is aptly named Sex Bomb. So, for all you Tom Jones fans out there, you know, we potentially see an SSTO with the intention of launching from Spaceport Cornwall, uh, you know, in the very near future, if any of these technologies do make it off the ground at all beyond the planning stage. So, what's my conclusion on this one? Well, this one's not a failure, and I wanna rename it. I wanna call this an incomplete mission, because as I've already said, we did successfully launch a rocket from mainland UK soil with the intention of getting to orbit. And that isn't such a bad thing. That is a good first step. So let's stop with all the doom and gloom and let's think of the positives here. I've been Tom June. Thanks for watching.